Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to the ultimate automation challenge. Now, the new space industry upgrade has just dropped into this base, and it has had some interesting effects on on the regolith that's way up there. Matter of fact, let's go ahead up there and take a look at that. Look at this. Look at this crazy stuff just stacking all the way into space, man. So, <laughs> not only that, look at how much there is. Let's Let's find a good one. Oh, here's a good one. 24,799 kilograms. What? What? That is so much. If only Liam was here, he could just dig till his heart's content. It actually blew up some other stuff over here. Like, I don't know how the regolith... It must have stacked down here and just gone through anything above it. So this poor chamber that I had it ended up kind of hot. I've done some stuff here. There were some comments over here in the in the comment section that were talking about, you know, this base is getting a little bit messy. There's some things I should clean up, and, and you're right. And that almost happens in every series that I need to, at some point, stop and just start to clean some things up. So that's kind of what I did right here. This sensor down here that I had in this area that's actually condensing the steam was not working correctly because it would back up and therefore if the pipes back up it doesn't really work if you use the sensor method so I'm just going to install a normal good old-fashioned liquid filter right there and I'm going to filter out that polluted water so that I stop pumping all sorts of crazy stuff over there the hydrogen vent over here has started to function and man it's it's extra cold um, I've noticed that the wheeze warts really aren't doing the whole venturi thing right now either they what what happened here no when did this happen i don't know when that happened but stuff clearly melted it's a mild problem there however the liquid that is flowing up here is condensing this down i didn't really put a lot of effort into that liquid loop i can put some more effort into it once i really you know get that whole system here up and running right now it's just kind of functioning well enough to do what it needs to do so some other things i did earlier here in the day is i put these canister filters down here and what that is doing is it's actually cleaning out the air that was down here there was just a lot of chlorine that had built up and some natural gas that had flowed into the you know the wrong spot so i just put some canisters right here now so you can see there's just several canisters of chlorine right there ready to go and we can use that to our advantage and actually put it in some other places. I also put in uh, a couple of jet suit docks over here. Now, what was kind of funny is that when the dupes would go through this, they would just like pop up and then go right out this door. They just didn't care at all. They just jump in the suit and then just go flying off throughout the rest of the base. Matter of fact, Meep was the first one to make that make that move. So what I've done here is I've actually just put these two tiles there and so far that has restricted them from going anywhere else. And, I, this door here is just locked essentially and also built up some wall so what i'm doing over here is just starting to expand downward so that we can build into some more stuff down here into this base also dug out some more stuff and generally just kind of cleaned up the different odds and ends that were just kind of sticking around in the base and you know all the weird little bits like this thing right here i should really deconstruct that just to get rid of it we don't need it there Probably one of the biggest things that I've noticed here is was actually mentioned to me in more than one way. <laughs> Although I first noticed this from Deuce Toto, who tweeted me, and he said, hey, you can build pumps now out of steel. And look at that, overheat temperature at 275 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to have to play around with that tomorrow to see what we can do with this new high temperature gas pump. Like that... That really does change everything. We can now effectively pump steam. And it looks like, yes, you could do it with liquid as well. Hmm. <laughs> oh, lucky me. There's a little bit of polluted water here that's created a liquid lock for all of this natural gas. Whew. And here I was thinking I was about to flood this entire area with boatloads of natural gas. Not quite. Close. I feel like right now is a good place to kind of revisit some of the things that I've already kind of made inside of this base that are fairly interesting. So this first system we designed right here 
is an automated cold generator which provides power for what was the early systems in the game, which is going to be like the water sieve and the lights and things that are around there. So how this works is the carbon dioxide falls down and the algae terrariums down here will eat up the extra carbon dioxide that happens to fall down into them. This gives off oxygen for the base and provides a good amount of oxygen, which was enough for my dupes when I was first starting off, although I've had to supplement them with other systems later on in the game. The terrariums give out polluted water, which I actually run to this bottle emptier, and that flows down here to this liquid pump. The nice thing about this is since there's carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide holds in any of that polluted oxygen that would otherwise get out of this area. But if it does, I have a little bit of a deodorizer. Everything inside of here is fed automatically using different uh, auto sweepers. So the coal that's coming from all of my little hatches over here gets piped directly from that area down here. So I just have boatloads of coal that I can use to provide more and more power. At a later stage in the game, I hooked up this smart battery to run to the small power transformer. And what that does is it runs off to an automated power grid here to provide distribution for all of the equipment that I've built at a later date. So all my power systems currently in the game feed this in one way or another. So yeah, whether it's a self-powering hydrogen system here or it's, it's this system over here, which runs a petroleum generator and a natural gas generator or just my natural gas generators over here. They all essentially feed into the exact same distribution hub over there and then spreads that throughout the base. Now that was definitely made at a later date, not early on. Oh, and a good thing that I should do do there. Uh oh, let's make sure I can pump that out. So I did not do that yet. So where I want polluted water to enter the system is going to be right down here. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get all the way over there. Well, luckily I spaced everything out by an extra tile there. So I can actually just bridge right over this. Like so. That's a very easy way to do stuff like this. Boom, boom. And I can then find my way all the way over there. One of the other things you can see with my pipes is that I'm now running petroleum. Okay, so before I get distracted on, on everything else, um, this system over here, like I said, the polluted water actually pumps out and goes through a couple different water sieves. And that also maintenances the lavatory as well so that the excess water that runs through this system, even though it's massively complex looking, uh, will come out at the very end into one of two locations. It can come down over here where I can use it for cooking, or it comes down over here on the right, which is used for irrigation of the bristle blossoms. Anymore, since I'm really not growing any more meal lice or mealwood, it all goes to the bristle blossom. So that flows all the way through here, and then as it overflows, because it can't feed these terrariums, uh, the extra water just goes over to the farm. So that pretty much wraps up that whole system. And it's all, you know, these things are fed automatically using conveyor overlays and then the, it comes down here and it gets composted in back into dirt, which then goes up to the farm and you get the idea. At some point I created an automated storage retrieval system. You can see that right here. There's a lot of different things that are being shipped in. And I think I want to copy these settings over there so then I can actually sort out what's coming in. Although it seems as if that decided to jam up on me right when I started looking at it because, you know, why not? This is one of the other cool systems that I've put inside the base here. So what this is is an oil refinery that's self-powering. So uh, you'll come in here and you'll run the oil refinery and the byproducts of that oil refinery you know, you essentially get natural gas, polluted water, which then gets reprocessed into clean water so that the carbon dioxide that's introduced here turns into polluted water and so on and so forth. So the liquid system is self-managing uh, with overflows and everything. And then the petroleum that gets used up in one spot or another goes back into the generator or it can go off into cooling loops, which effectively run over here and just cool the base. 
So a good example of this thing working is if I go to the carbon dioxide, you can see that as the carbon dioxide gets put down here, this thing's gonna pressurize a little bit and then we scrub that carbon dioxide out of the air. So that takes in a little bit of the clean water there, goes into the polluted water, that polluted water cools equipment down and then up here it just gets reprocessed into clean water which then refills that system right there. If there's extra clean water, uh, then that system will empty water into the rest of rest of my other systems here, like right there. So it'll go into, uh, essentially it'll go into the farm, uh, the algae terrariums. And again, the byproducts here are automatically swept away. And filtration medium should be automatically delivered, but it looks like I never actually made that conveyor rail. Oh well, certain things. Let's see here, what else is interesting? Ah, yes, the automated steel factory up here. So this thing is crazy and it took a little while to get working correctly. But to give you an idea, when I queue up something like gold, you know, this auto sweeper basically fills and primes this metal refinery and all of the crude oil is already delivered. And then as it processes, it's going to only let the crude oil go out once it reaches a certain temperature. You know, a nice high temperature. So I can get as much work out of that crude oil as I possibly can. Anyhow, once it comes out, it then gets loaded down here. So this was some crude oil at a high temperature. And that gets reprocessed back down in the oil refinery. That becomes petroleum. Which now fuels something like my jet suit dock down here, which is already you know, set up to go and it's basically lets my dupes fly around and, and dig stuff like this, which is really cool. Huh? So Lerda over there is actually going to go and fly around. Hey, look at that. She can move. Just took a jetpack. That's all. She's off to get some eggshell. That's all. Okay, so one... F oh, this is interesting over here. So this is essentially a polymer press and the whole thing is slightly automated for temperature. This whole thing is automated for temperature. I'm using this for a lot of stuff over here. So by cooling the natural gas generators down, I get very, very cold polluted water, which is then used to condense the steam up here. You can see the temperature inside of there is relatively cool-ish in certain spots. <laughs> um, that is all controlled by the petroleum loop that I have going on over here. So this has several different loops that it can fill and cool down, which then make its way into my base to cool down various loops in my base to maintain the temperature inside of here to a relatively decent level, which I am now a little bit too hot because I drained all of that petroleum into the cooling loop that is running over here which essentially, which is going up here to do this number to condense the steam and all of that stuff and the space base, which is just struggling because it's hot and I haven't really built much up there. Rest in peace, Leo. Huh? What else have I done? Man, there's a lot of stuff here. All right, so this is up and running. <laughs> yeah, yep, 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 yep. Okay, it's just not plugged in yet. I'm gonna go ahead and put a hydro sensor. Oh, right down here is where I want it. What else was I looking at? We talk about this farm yet? Okay, these are dust caps. They're growing down here. This thing is maintained temperature wise by some, some of that cooling loop down here, which is the first one I did, which is hydrogen. <sighs> Look at all that hydrogen. So that hydrogen cools down to a certain temperature with some logic and whatnot and flows throughout the rest of the base on its way back. Um, sorry, it doesn't flow throughout the base. It flows down here through the farm so that this has the correct body temperature. Oh, and there's too much hydrogen in it. So I just need to run that to zero for a little while. Oh, actually I have a way to vent this. <laughs> So I guess what I'm trying to get at here is for some of you that have, haven't been following this series the entire time, all the way up to where I'm currently at now, there is a lot of crazy kind of experiments and ideas that have 
led up to where I'm currently at in the game. So while it may look like chaos and may look like a disaster, there's actually a lot of automation and thought that's put into each one of these systems. Even if they are kind of all science experiments that are like cobbled together in some chaotic mess. The point is, this whole system and the way that it's set up has pushed me to learn so many new things about how to actually design things inside of this game and even learning some things in real life as far as logic gates and whatnot or simply how to work with the different ideas that are over here in the comment section and how to turn those different ideas into you know reality into a real thing and i hope to build more on top of that in the future here oh like this one down here remember this automated wheeze one there's another video. So many connections to this one base that has led to, I would say, roughly about the last 50 episodes we've seen in this entire series or more. Maybe even more. Look at Max go! Hmm. Hmm. I saw some an interesting idea from Steven here, and I love this idea. Check it out. So there's a little base up there. Rocket suit to sleep in space. I like it. That seems like a fun idea. Okay, so I got this thing hooked up and you can see just how much polluted water there is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little bit of a sensor, a little sensor here. Let's make it out of gold, why not? I got plenty of that. I'm gonna plug this in just like so. And then once that's built, I could just set a limit. I think I want to empty some pipe here. Okay, so I got a little bit of polluted water in this system and I didn't want that to make its way through, so. I'm just going to bottle up this water here. It's actually a great way to <laughs> to just auto-bottle a bunch of water. If you have a giant line of it, I mean, just look at Nicola go. And this water, where's that water go? Uh, I think it's probably going to the farm. Yep, going to the farm thing. Uh, to the food, not the farm. Okay, let me just cancel that. There we go. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time tonight. I did have time, but I ended up, like getting into the comments and then Google searching for like, I don't know, several hours. But let me just answer some other questions here. Uh, one of the questions is, what am I doing about some of those geysers that I haven't analyzed? Um, the answer to that one is I just kind of forgot to analyze it, so I never did. But the other ones I have actually analyzed, so it's not like a big deal. I don't ever intend to analyze that, so yeah. Let's go ahead and see if I can finish up this stuff down here. Uh, and the other question was, what about the oil well? Well, the thing is I didn't really have a consistent source of water that was big enough for me to like go and pump a bunch of water into an oil reservoir just to get oil out of it and well, some natural gas. So the reason I haven't messed with those pretty much ever is because I've always had more than enough crude oil just laying around. So there's really no point in me poking that thing but I might poke it a little bit more now, especially since we have the ability to put high temperature pumps in. So that might actually be one thing that we could actually focus on now as well, because that does usually, in the past, I thought it created quite a bit of heat or let off a lot of heat. So I wasn't too crazy about it, but I do have three of them down here that I could tap into. So that might be a topic for a future video at some point here. There's also been a lot of questions about, am I going to do a new run of the game? And I, I think I definitely will at some point here. I'm not sure when the official release will be out, but what I would like to do, uh, as far as you know, the way my channel runs and everything, is I would, I would like to do like a blueprint run of the base. So kind of try to take a lot of these sort of ideas that have been explored in the um, automatic or the ultimate automation challenge here and try to build certain levels, different levels of automation. And you know, so you can build this system early on or you can build this system later on once you have certain things unlocked. And try to just kind of come up with more, a more tutorialized version of, of the game. This is very much like a giant science experiment. And it, <laughs> as you can tell, it's, it's, it's madness. I mean, the whole thing is just madness. Not everything has worked out great either. Most of the stuff down here went, went pretty good. It was once we got up into this area where sudden things suddenly got a little bit crazy. I mean, can you 
Can you blame me? Look at how much regolith I got up there. I mean, Liam even died. Okay, so what I want to filter out is polluted water. There we go. Excellent. As far as other systems I would like to expand on, I definitely would like to expand on the farm situation so that I could support more duplicates than just what I have currently. Although there's a lot of cooking of different stuff that I'm not fully using. Like, there's a lot of sleet weed out there. You can see 1,500 units just ready to be cooked up. There's also a lot of barbecue that I could fry up or, you know, so there's a lot more food there. <laughs> Look at how many raw eggs I got. Some gristle berries as well. Well, I don't have any there just yet, but fried mushrooms, I can make a lot more there as well. So I'm not really limited on the amount of food. I'm kind of limited on the food that I've actually cooked up. That is one system that I could expand on to more automate the amount of food and food storage I have. And I have the space to do that. Automatic storage retrieval system. You can see that this is kind of causing me some problems. I've always had issues with this, with the arms kind of overlapping with each other and just having that not work out quite as well as I'd like it. I would also like to make it much larger because, you know, as long as you play the game for a decent number of cycles, you're going to, you know, run out of storage compactors very quickly. So we really need a system that's bigger than this. And I haven't, I know in theory how it would work, but I haven't actually done it. My right, what are you doing? You just stand in there. Now you're waiting for more oxygen. Hmm. There was a comment. Ugh, I can't find it. Hmm. Not sure where the comment came from exactly, but uh, the system that he was talking about Actually, right here, you see Mr. Havoc. And this is a double system of the exact same self-powering electrolyzer thing. Now, what he's saying here is that this will actually produce three times the amount of oxygen. Well, roughly about 900 kilograms is what he was talking about. So I would like to try to build one of these systems um, instead of what I'm currently doing up here with just the two systems. So I've got a good opportunity to rebuild this one since it's currently, well, it's just been murdered by high temperatures and saturated by a bunch of polluted oxygen. So I could definitely rework this thing and also clean up a lot of oxygen. That's, that's down there. All right, there's a couple of deodorizers. That'll make everybody happy. Bam. That way we don't get too, ah, look at all the germs. Okay, so I'm gonna dig this stuff up as well. Because it's just kind of there. It's so cool being able to, like, just dig without ladders and stuff. Look at Max go! What's he doing? Just picking up something? Marie! Why? What? Why'd you get stuck on me? Yeah, no wonder you're hungry. Yeah, there you go. It's a weird spot to get some food, but okay. I'll, I'll roll with it. Alright, so it's quite late. I know we really didn't build anything new in this episode but I did a lot of much needed maintenance to a lot of these different systems to get them up and running and, and running properly so I think the base is in a much better place than it was I don't know a couple hours ago there's also a lot of great new things that we can start to cover here as far as you know what can we do with this new gas pump and whatnot and I think that'll be Nice and interesting, and it'll make for a good week. So, thank you for watching. I may not have earned your subscription in this little episode here. I kind of feel like I left you guys a little bit short, but... We got some much-needed maintenance done. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar.